Can you believe it? We're already at the seventh short fuse devlog. I'm Charles, and we've got no time to waste, so let's jump in right with the updates. Let's start big with the game show. We've been talking about this for a while now, but we haven't had too much to show. But first, let's recap. What does this even mean? Short Fuse is composed of multiple different tracks, with each track representing a different area in the game. You'll be able to switch between the tracks through some in-game mechanisms to explore the Short Fuse facility. This started with the Diffusal track, which is the track we've been showing. This is also known as the Quality Assurance track and is the home department for the player. The game shows the second of these tracks, taking place in a, well, you might have guessed it, a game show. Apart from the narrative significance, the playstyle of this track is revamped to match the tone. It'll still be the short fuse you got familiar with in the Diffusal track, but with some new twists that up the ante. For today, we have progress to share on the transition between the Diffusal and Game Show tracks. I'll hand it over to Ken to talk about the overall sequence. Thank you! As a QA tester, every single Diffuse contributes to a wealth of data that will be used to produce instructions for our clients of the company that will make sure they can defuse the they purchase in case the worst ever occurs. At the same time, it must be still ensured that the remain frustrating to defuse for someone who isn't the intended recipient of one of our incredible products. This defusal data produced in conjunction with a patented algorithm made by Haley GPT is of great interest to many different people in the company who wish to use the data to further their own ends. But don't worry, this is where the interest your work gathers will work in your favor. Other employees of the company will contact you by email and perhaps will have little challenges for you which may come with rewards. Already senior employees at the company, perhaps they have the data you need to move around and leave the enclosed area you start in. Despite how anxious constant surveillance may make you, it does give you a little freedom. Since your desk travels with you when you change tracks, your work won't have to stop even when you're in the middle of a run. But do remember, this is just a transition. At the end of that elevator ride is going to be a whole new track with whole new bombs and whole new characters and a snazzy game show theme track to get your pulse pounding. But how is that email app going to work? And what other technical aspects of this transition need to be developed before we can release this content update to you? Here's Charles to talk about some of the details. Thanks, Ken. And of course, if the transition sounds like that, there's gonna be quite a bit to implement. If you've been watching our shorts, you've probably already seen a good chunk of the email app implementation. You'd imagine it'd be straightforward, but there's a lot to consider. First, Ken and Jacob wrote up a document with the must-have features. This included the obvious details like it needs to read email, but it also specifies some specific information needed to make it work. Like a signature should be displayed and the conditions for email showing up. Then, I created a mock-up for the email app. I brought together a collection of email apps that ran on Windows XP, so most of the classics like Outlook Exchange and Thunderbird, and also a few of the lesser known ones like First Class. I even booted up a virtual machine and installed a few of these for a burst of inspiration. In the past, I used PenPot for markups, but I wanted to see if making it in HTML would be better. Long story short, the conclusion, at least for me, is HTML is definitely slower, but it does still work. Anyways, there are a few key areas of an email. These are the folder hierarchy for inbox, junk, and sent, the toolbar for your primary actions, the email box itself, and the actual message view space. For modern apps, you typically see a more dynamic approach with pop-ups and context-sensitive toolbars not to mention integrations with other apps like calendars. But you don't really see that on older email clients, so I tried to stay true to that. And also all of that would be way too much stuff for one email app. In terms of moving from UI mockup to computer app, the process was pretty straightforward, though there are some oddities. Computer apps and short views use a Unity UI system, so there's a lot of playing around with layout boxes and constraints to make everything appear just right. You'll see that some items aren't created directly in the app. For example, each email is actually a dynamic element. These items are only shown when there's an email to represent, so they're only created when they're needed. And the way we know this is by checking the backend. On the backend, emails are stored with a condition that dictates when it should be displayed. This condition could be the current level, the number of bombs unlocked, or something else. It's important that we get quick access to emails so they're broken up and stored depending on the condition. Otherwise, we need to check every email every single time the inbox is refreshed. 
might be fine for a few emails, but performance would quickly degrade as emails are added. Hopefully that makes sense. Maybe I'll post some details in the Discord if anyone's interested in the specifics. But anyways, what's an email app without some emails? Right, Jacob? Exactly, Charles. Emails are a great way to let characters interact with the player without breaking that remote, isolated feeling of the QA room. That doesn't mean there isn't plenty of room for narrative flavor in them, though. Emails are actually full of little opportunities for characterization, like the automated signatures each sender has created or kept as the default. The same goes for subject lines. Think about the difference in subject lines you receive from a familiar coworker versus a spam advertisement. I really have to give props to Charles on the app's UI and backend. It lets me give so much more personality to these emails. That isn't to say that the body text itself doesn't have anything interesting going on. People write differently than they talk, especially when it comes to work emails. A fellow QA worker, for instance, probably doesn't have a lot of time to worry about proofreading while they're on the, well, ticking clock. And naturally, having access to many different potential triggers for the sending of emails means I can tie them to certain events. This lets me design more dynamic emails that react to what the player is doing. But hey, that's enough of a break. You're here to see some f***s, right? Well, I'm gonna hand it off to Leon to talk about the latest one to be cooked up. Well, if you think normal b**** are boring and too easy, let me introduce you to the talk b**** These b**** are designed with hidden wires that only appear when some of the outer wires are snipped. Our first talk b**** is the suitcase b**** You will see it soon. Hey Chad, do you have anything new with the other b**** A big goal for this summer is to go back and polish off the old stuff that was unchanged for making a game in one week. That includes a lot of the b**** like the default b**** bouquet and fan. Some of these changes were so minor the players won't even see them, but others replace the model entirely. So after going through the b everything should look a lot more smooth. After several weeks of work, the computer is finally ready. This is a new character that will guide the player through the tutorial and give them modifiers in the form of floppy disks. The computer has procedurally generated arms that allow them to add and remove geometry as they extend and retract. Chad made some animations for him, and then we used a new method of exporting so we could capture all of the procedurally generated instances in the arms. So now we have a new mascot for the game that you'll make great friends with. So, what do you think about the transition to the game show? Stay tuned to our shorts and discord for more updates along the way, and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, and see you next month.